Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, these clouds are supposed to roll out of here in the next couple of hours and be mostly a sunny day, which it has been lately. Great solar conditions. And we're coming upon two years since we made the switch from lead acid batteries to lithium iron phosphate. So thought I'd go back to the beginning of how it all started. Well, it's hard to believe that it's been almost two years since I made the switch from lead acid batteries for storage to lithium iron phosphate. And this is where we started right here with one Chins 12.8 volt 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I did have uh, six old lead acid batteries as the storage bank uh, that were starting to die and I started researching lithium iron phosphate and decided to make the plunge and started with this right here, the very first battery. I was so impressed with how that one worked. I quickly saved up, added a second one, tied them in parallel, as you can see there, for a 600 amp hour uh, bank of storage at 12 volts. And I've recently been asked by a couple of you out there, how do these chins continue to work uh, about two years in? And I've got to tell you that they have worked absolutely as they should, perfectly. I've had zero problems with them. They have never let me down. Not one single problem that I can report back. And after upgrading to the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, I went and started using an MPPT charge controller. I have lots of videos on this EP ever. I used to run uh, one when I started, uh, went up to running two of these for two different strings of solar panels coming in. Uh, spent an awful lot of time getting these configured to work right. They did. Uh, I was never fully satisfied with them and then eventually made the switch over to these Victron charge controllers which I'm very happy I did that. Uh, I've got these tied in a network together. They work very, very good together. They talk to each other. Uh, they basically each uh, read exactly the same amount of power coming in off of two separate 500 watt strings. Each one of them has a string tied into it at 500 watts. And you can see that they're uh, in absorption mode right now and just humming along perfectly. This was a great upgrade. And I'll walk you through the whole system, how it's developed over the past couple of years. So I did add this reliable 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. You can see I've got it tied in. A couple of bus bars. A couple of DC breakers from the charge controllers between the charge controller and the bus bars. I added a solar isolator switch. I can quickly open this, flip these switches down, cut off my solar panels anytime I make any further adjustments. <clears throat> I did add a Victron uh, 12 volt, 30 amp charger. I don't have to use that very often but I did want one in place for if I ever did need to do that. I put a quick disconnect switch in here. I've got my ILE or QWORK. I've seen it under both names. It's the exact same uh, battery monitor. I like these, they work very well. You can see it's 94% full right now in its absorption phase. The only problem I ever occurred uh, in this entire system, and, and this one has all the, the looks of my very first system. I haven't had to change it any. It, <clears throat> it could be tightened up and shortened on some of these runs. 
uh, as far as the wires and everything, but um, it's working so well that I've just left it the way it is because it does work so well. But the only problem I did incur one time was hooking up this uh, battery monitor. I had one of these small wires pop out. It made contact, blew a, blew a fuse. I made a video about that, scared me to death. And ever since then, I've never had a problem. I did as was recommended to me. I put a little 10 amp fuse right there, just in case anything like that was to happen again. It would cut the whole system off there rather than arc like it did. So this system has been running 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the past two years, just, just shy of two years now. It's hard to believe that that much time has gone by. Where does the time go? But everything, as I've upgraded along the way, I've learned a lot. You've watched me build a lot of similar type of systems. I've tightened it up on my other systems. It doesn't look like this. This was just my very first attempt at building a system uh, with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. This continues to power the whole house, running a 20 cubic foot refrigerator full time. Everything just does fantastically. And as far as the batteries go, I have never run these batteries down to a, a complete zero charge, you know, or a hundred percent depth of discharge. Uh, when I hook these up, you know, I, I researched about them and learned as much as I could about them and they can take a hundred percent depth of discharge uh, for a very long time, a couple thousand cycles anyway, but then as a lot of us know that if you can cycle them only at an 80% depth of discharge, you're going to get years longer out of these batteries. So that's what I try to do. Just and, and I've got extra systems and extra batteries that allow me to really play around with that to not drive these things down to zero. I, I never have. I don't plan on ever doing it. But if in the event that I ever had to, you're not going to suffer any serious degradation about taking these down all the way, but just because I do uh, want to make them last as long as possible, I always try and do just that 80% depth of discharge or even a little less because it will really expand the life of these uh, batteries. So if they ever get down to, you know, 20% or something like that, I can switch my power system over to some other auxiliary systems I have or if I wanted to, I could fire up a generator and run this charger and pump them up real quick, you know, up to, you know, a higher state of charge until the sun would come out and work in our favor. So, yeah, as a general rule, I'm not cycling these down ever below that 20%. And two years in, I have never had a problem. These things have never flinched for one second. And they just continue to work so well. You know, they're maintenance free. There's no water or anything to be added to these. Uh, really a, just a much user friendly system than the old lead acid battery days. And now here we are in mid-March. Uh, the sun is getting pretty high. We're a lot closer to the equator. Pretty much the most southern uh, point in the United States that you can be. In fact, the most southern point of the United States is on this island down at South Point, but I'm north of that, but still the sun is very high, being closer to the equator. Um, it's almost straight overhead already, which is a big difference from uh, a lot of your mainland uh, altitudes and or longitude and latitude, I meant to say, not altitude. <laughs> But anyway, the sun does get to a very high uh, point in the sky early in the year here, and it stays up like that for a lot longer. It just goes straight up overhead and hangs up there for a very long time. So under those kind of charging conditions, uh, this system works very, very well. And yeah, those were the very first batteries, and they continue to work 
just so well. So if any of you were just sitting on the fence and wondering about whether it's worth changing out your old lead acid system that's starting to fail, uh, I, I couldn't encourage you uh, more strongly to go ahead and make the switch to lithium iron phosphate. These things are just plug and play and zero problems. And I've reviewed a bunch of other batteries besides these chins and they all work just, just fine. I've never had a problem with any of the batteries I've reviewed on this channel. They all work well. These just happen to be my, my first and they are doing so good. So yeah, sun coming in, 500 watts coming in here, 500 watt string coming in here, solar panel isolator, couple of breakers, there's a fuse, that was the one that I had blown when I had that error that that little wire came off of the battery monitor. I've got a quick disconnect for when I want to come in here and change something, move something around, which I don't do anymore, really. I'm just very happy with the way this is. It doesn't look as neat and organized as some of my other uh, little builds, but man, it's just working so well. And here I am early in the, early in the day, 95% full, couldn't be happier. These lights will turn green in just a minute. And I'm really glad that I made the switch to the Victron too. I use Victron now on every system that I build. It's just another plug and play. You've got a lithium iron phosphate setting in there. It works well for me. Now on their lithium iron phosphate setting, uh, uh, pre-programmed, in these charge controllers. Takes it up to 14.2 volts during its absorption phase and then kicks it down to 13.5 as a float. And we're not really floating the batteries, as you know, but once you get up to that uh, full state of charge, it just lets it go down and settle down to 13.5. If you run a load and it draws it down below that 13.5, it'll open the solar panels back up and allow it to stay at least at that 13.5, which is still a full battery. I learned an awful lot building this first system and I, I had some problems along the way, which was just my own knowledge about how everything works and, and what other little components I might need to make it the best. And right now I've got it uh, working just so, so good that I don't need to worry about it anymore. It just runs, runs, runs. So that's how it all started out here. The very first video I ever put out was the arrival of that first Chins battery. I decided to start this channel and just kind of document my experience. And here we are just at two years later, <laughs> come a long way. Never look back. Very, very happy. And thanks for taking this journey with me, everybody. We'll continue to put out a lot more content. And in fact, on the next video, going to attempt a teardown of a new battery been sent out. And that's going to be a first here, tearing down a battery. All right, lots to look forward to. Aloha, everybody.